The world is on red alert and in crisis. Global warming is one of the biggest existential threats of our time. Talking to Dr. Richard Renan, Africa's environment hero, multiple award winner, and sustainability champion provokes radical new thinking and innovative, bold action. So what are we dealing with? Well, sometimes it feels as though we're living in a perpetual crisis, right? And yet, despite the kind of enticement, we cannot simply erect a firewall, excuse the pun, to contain this intensifying global warming that transcends our national and international borders. So how do we deal with this crisis? How do we innovate, adapt, and transform? Well, there are two distinct phases. The first is the emergency phase, where we stabilize the crisis and buy more time. We often seek and ask our authority figures to give us the quick technical fix. And after a raging fire or a rising flood, to come in with the teams and clean up, fix up, and hopefully restore most of what was there before. The second phase, the adaptive phase, is much more tricky. We need to tackle the underlying causes of the crisis. We need to build new skills and capacity beyond the existing technical skills in order for us to not only survive, but thrive in a new reality. And yet it is so much harder to change the way we think, act, and lead. People will put you under enormous pressure to maintain the status quo, to address their anxieties with an authoritative confidence, often asking you or requiring of you that you sell more than you do know and discount what you don't. And despite the risk, we must resist the temptation to fake it or allegedly fix it and be bold enough to lead. There's some critical questions. What is the nature of the challenge? Is it technical? Is it adaptive? Or is it both? In the case of global warming, some of the technical challenges are to come up with cost-effective alternatives to burning fossil fuels. The adaptive challenge requires that we rewire and reset the system, that we challenge and change the rules of the game. What we do, what we say, how we think, and how we lead. There are six practical steps that you can follow. And in fact, Richard has applied all of these six steps in several innovative projects across the African continent. Firstly, experiment. He created an incubation hub. Secondly, you need to foster adaptation and balance competing demands. In other words, excel at old practices like subsistence farming while practicing the new best practice like new clean energy solutions. Thirdly, you need to embrace disequilibrium. It is good to feel uncomfortable. Stability is a liability, not an asset. If there is no crisis, there is no urgency and no change. Number four, it also requires that despite the disequilibrium, we need to manage and moderate the heat. We need to create discomfort, yes, but we need to produce a productive zone of disequilibrium. If the temperature is too low, there will not be the difficult conversations and discussions. However, if the temperature is too high, people often panic and freeze. Number five, we need to generate a level of leadership beneath the top. No top team alone can come up with the best innovative solutions. It is the youth of Africa that are experimenting and practicing new skills to come up with profitable clean energy solutions for their communities. And finally, perhaps most significantly, you need to take great care of yourself. You need to take care of your outlook, your sanctity, and your pro professional and personal identities. When the going gets tough, it is often that strong inner sense of personal identity 
that pulls us through. So until next time, remember that leading boldly is about making thoughtful, clear choices. And bold leadership is about taking bold action. Just one small step at a time. One step for you, but together, a giant step for humanity. So take care and take thoughtful, bold action.